The Wyatt Six finally made their in-ring debut, but did it live up to the hype? We'll discuss probably the best episode of Monday Night Raw this year on Wrestling with Ya Boy. Yes, sir. The best. The best. Now, y'all know me. Still same OG. It's your boy, Quan. And, of course, <clears throat> ooh, something in my throat. Pause. Pause. Oh, pause. Oh, oh. I got my boy with me. My BFF. Yes, I'm still saying it. I'm still saying it. You hear that? I'm still saying it. My BFF, the coolest man in the world, Jay Cooley. Cooley, Cooley with a t-shirt. It's the really tank cold. Top. <laughs> the tank top. What's going the on, man? Top. What's going on? What a good weekend. What a good man. weekend. Whew. Man, the best r- Raw since <sighs> Raw after Mania, dog. Like, what, yeah, what, what's man. going on with Triple H? Triple H, H is bad. He, going he crazy. ain't ready. He on Reddit for sure. <laughs> <laughs> He's definitely on Reddit. Fam, did you see what Dave Meltzer said about SummerSlam, dog? I didn't. What did he say? He said that SummerSlam was a great story show, but the wrestling wasn't good. What is What does that mean, first of all? Like, a great story show, but not a great wrestling show. I mean, do these people WWE realize that wrestling is storytelling? Do these people realize that it's a TV show? Like, <laughs> what are we doing? Dave Meltzer and Brian Alvarez get on my nerves, man. Like, shout out to them. I, they have more wrestling knowledge in their thumb than I will probably have in my life. They've been doing this for decades, but some of these opinions be so outdated from them, man. Matter of fact, matter of fact. I haven't brought this up on this podcast yet, but matter of fact, Brian Alvarez was speaking on an old NXT episode like a couple months ago. Mm. And Trick Williams invited Cody Rose to the cookout. <laughs> Brian Alvarez had no idea what that was. So on his show, he's just sitting there talking and he's like, I guess Trick Williams invited Cody Rose to some type of cookout because they do that at NXT, I guess, apparently in the court. I'm like, bro, that's not what the cookout is. What are we doing? He missed the point. <laughs> He missed a whole joke. Oh, brother. It went all the way over his head. Just all the way. How, how would you explain the cookout to a, a white person? For the people that don't know what a cookout is. <laughs> the Wait, cookout is basically that? inviting somebody who is non-African American to something that is African American. You know? Right. And, and, the cookout, and the cookout don't actually exist. Let me just explain that to y'all. The, the cookout is not a real place. It's an imaginary place. If I say you're invited to the cookout, that's just me saying, as a black man, I stand by you. I co-sign you as a non-black person. That's what an invitation to the cookout is. It's not an actual thing that we have that we're going to bring you to and stand around. So, like, (laughs) Brian Alvarez, bro, we're not inviting y'all to the real cookout. The real cookout is just for us. But in our hypothetical (laughs) imaginary cookouts, Cody Rose had a pass from Trick Williams, man. It wasn't a real cookout. So, Brian Alvarez, man, you did it again. You did it again. Cody First, Rose. it was a whoop that trick that he didn't understand, and now he didn't understand the cookout, man. Man, he needs to tap more into the culture because what's going on, man? It's not a nonsense. Jeff Bro, Hardy, I always say Cody it. Rose, Tony Hawk. Who, who, else, who else will be invited to the cookout? Was, <laughs> is Cody, is Tony Khan invited to the cookout? Tony Khan is definitely not invited, man. <laughs> he can stay over there eating his cheese plates and – Damn, that's foul. That's I don't foul. know. That's foul. But, uh, yeah, you know, Jeff Hardy, Tony Hawk. Jeff Hardy's definitely invited to any cookout just because that's Jeff Hardy, <laughs> man. He, he wore torn pantyhose on his arm, dog. Like, how can he not be invited to the cookout? <laughs> and then Triple H, man. Triple H, he might, you know, he he, he not he not booking the wrestlers the way it is. If he keeps, I don't know. <laughs> he, he ain't really booking the brothers. He ain't booking the brothers. But if he keep booking like this. Yeah. If we keep looking like this, then you know he might be invited to the cookout because Raw was incredible, dog. Yeah, especially after this Raw, because we finally seen some color. Let's go. We did, we did, we did. My boy Odyssey Jones. Matter of fact, let's just get into it. Let's just get into it. Can I hashtag talk some Raw, bro? Can we go in Raw? You trying to go Raw with me, Cooley? Um, All the way Raw. (laughs) Pause by the Trust way. Me. I don't know why I keep doing that. I don't know why I keep doing that. I be I be I be I get on this Whoa. podcast and I start acting different. Like like John Wall and uh Bradley Bill. I ain't never seen you act like this before. <laughs> but let's John hashtag Wall. talk some more. Let's get into it. Let's get it. The show opened with handsome Squidward introducing Keith Lee's biggest regret. Our new world champion Gunther 
Gunther claims his title run will be legendary, and knowing Triple H, he might have that thing for the next decade. Randy Orton showed up because the brand split only exists in our imaginations, and the match was made official for Bash at Berlin. Next up, it was on site for Ludwig, Kaiser, and Sheamus. I swear, no matter how old Sheamus gets, you can always expect a tough, greedy performance from him. He's basically the Sarah J of wrestling. Whoa. Damian Priest showed up in the tank top and said we were all his new family. I guess his new gimmick is Ben Diesel from Fast and the Furious. <laughs> Finn Balor cut probably the best promo of his career, and Lyra got jumped by the studs. CM Punk and Seth Rollins showed up, and Drew McIntyre showed up as well. This is the most hate that Baltimore has seen since Marlo Stanfield and Omar Little. Them boys beefing, beefing. Bronson Reed hit Seth Rollins with more dives than an AEW undercard and probably one of the best star-making angles in recent memory. Seriously, he did Seth how Majin Buu did Supreme Kai. Karrion Cross and New Day are still feuding for reasons I will never understand. This feud has less heat than Section 8 housing in Detroit. New Day got saved by a big black and no, not Big E, Odyssey Joes. A-Town Down Under is on the show because again, the brand split only exists in our imaginations. They wrestled awesome truth over which team was worse and everybody lost. This match was ass. These teams are ass. It's time to split these teams up. Next up, Judgment Day's jobber fought Razor Raul. JD and Priest arguably... <laughs> I can't believe I just said Razor Raul. That was foul. <laughs> JD and Priest surprisingly tore the house down before Finn snuck Priest from behind. Rhea made the save, and goddamn, this episode of Raw is cooking. And then finally, the Wyatt Six made their in-ring debut against Perk Gable and the Creeds. And it worked. It worked. They had chemistry. The match was great. And despite Dexter Loomis having white man dreads, I was digging everything about this match. No packs for Raw this week. WWE is two for two. This was probably the best Raw since the post-mania show. So salute the Triple H. If you keep booking like this, I might have to open up a spot at the cookout for you. Just might. <laughs> yeah, man. Triple H cooking, man. Triple H cooking. Um... Uh, I agree with you. No packs, no packs. Monday, I was I was tuned in. I was glued to my TV, man. This is this is way better than a Raw at the Mania. Um, probably my favorite Raw at the SummerSlam in years. It's been a decade, <laughs> probably. I don't right. I was cooking, but um, I will say my favorite part of this whole uh, Raw was the Wyatt Six. Man, it was just a beautiful thing man. to hear them come out to shatter. Ah, oh, man. Oh. So ah, man. I was but almost I'm, afraid of how this would go just because of the mask and yeah. I said it before, they're horror movie villains cosplaying as wrestlers. So I just really didn't know how this would look on TV. But um the match was incredible. First of all, this match took place in Baltimore where Bray Wyatt made his debut as Bray Wyatt. So that was an incredible callback. Secondly, they came out to Shatter, which is Bray Wyatt's theme he had before he unfortunately passed away. So Everything about this was great. And the match was incredible. incredible. I don't know if that's just me being a Bray Wyatt fan. I was just anything they would have done would have won me over at that point. But it was a good match. I loved it, man. Damn near shed a tear, man. I was like, ah, God. And then I seen the videos uh, online where it, it was off air and then it was hugging, you know. Yeah, yeah I saw that. Enjoying too. that moment. It was, it was beautiful. It was beautiful, man. R.I.P. Bray Wyatt for sure. Got me, um, shedding a, Dexter, got me shedding a tear. <laughs> man, it was it was sad, man. You know, but um Dexter Loomis with, with locks is still hilarious. <laughs> like, I don't care what you say. Like, it's just funny, <laughs> dog. Like he literally had a mustache and like a sand lot haircut, and then now a he just have a lot sand lot haircut. <laughs> <laughs> he now he had got that, dreads. Like, <laughs> he had that like paper boy in the 60s haircut, and now he out here with dreads and a cross on his head. I'm like, okay. It's I feel crazy. It. I feel it. But it, it was lit, man. And, it was um, good. It was, it was incredible, though. How did we feel about our boy Razor Raul? Damian Priest is like a huge baby face now, bro. <laughs> he's getting he's those huge. incredible pops. Him and Rhea but, Ripley, they're like, the fans are in love with them right now. Yeah, the the Terror Twins. I hope that's not their name. <laughs> that sounds so I, terrible. I think, I think their name, I think they're called the, the Terror Twins now. I mean, that's better than the Gruesome Twosome because, you know. The, gruesome Twosome sound like Don a, Mysterio and Ray, Rhea Ripley were, were called the Gruesome Twosome, and that sounds awful. That sounds like a, a failed Playboy project. Like, what is that? <laughs> What? But no, I'm, I'm, nah, I'm digging. I'm digging the uh, the fan and Damian Priest, but I do want to touch on one thing though. One thing I was on the fence about. 
One thing I was definitely on the fence about. So my boy Odyssey Jones has finally shown up, right? Mm. It seems like he's replacing Big E in the New Day. I don't know if I'm rocking with that. Like, I, I get it. I get that the New Day need a third man, and he, he's big. He can be funny. And he's strong as hell. He did a double sidewalk slam on those big-ass authors of pain. Strong. Guys. So that's crazy. Yeah. But can Big E really be replaced? I don't know. Oh no. I, I don't I don't think it's gonna work. Do we have to do it? Do we really have to do it? Like, do we really have to replace Big E? We can just have New Day as a two man. I don't think we need I don't think we have to replace Big E, bro. I don't think I, we I think they're all gonna just probably just separate because apparently from that segment, Xavier is not rocking with Odyssey Jones, like clearly. And yeah, he was not I don't think he, he was not. He's not rocking with Odyssey Jones. I yeah, just feel like Kobe that, was all in, but Xavier was yeah, like, for sure. I feel like Hunter brought Odyssey back because we're we need some opponents for for a guy like strong Bronson Reed, and we need some yeah. opponents for Jacob Fatu. These yeah. are like our strongest guys in wrestling right now. So you know he bringing all these powerhouses up, and we're gonna see what to do. But as far as him replacing Biggie, it's not happening. Yeah, Biggie is the Big e is irreplaceable, and I'm not just saying that because Biggie was on the show. I ain't just saying that because he's a hobie, but like. Uh. You can't. <laughs> <laughs> My producer in our ear, you said, nah, you just said that because he was on the show. I'm serious, man. Big E is irreplaceable. That man it was one of the first black world champions, man. So Odyssey Jones is dope. Don't get me wrong. And I'm rooting for Odyssey Jones. And I'm hoping that this is just a storyline thing and not something that's going to be permanent. But uh, I don't know if I like Odyssey Jones replacing Big E. But I do want to speak on something else that you mentioned, which was Bronson Reed being a powerhouse. Jesus Christ, if you did not watch Raw, Bronson Reed's career was made last night. Bronson Reed destroyed Seth Rollins to the point where Seth Rollins was coughing up blood. Now, obviously, this was it was kayfabe. I'm sure Seth Rollins is fine. But this was the type of beatdown that has kids crying in the audience. This was if I was seven years old, I would have been in that audience just grabbing my mom's arm and screaming. He destroyed Seth Rollins. (laughs) <laughs> six tsunamis six, <laughs> six tsunamis okay so what's funny okay i love wrestling i love it but like Uh-oh. you still gotta call out the dumb stuff and it's Uh-oh. hilarious like the dumb stuff be so hilarious because bronson reed did six tsunamis whole time they could have just moved Seth out of the way like they just- <laughs> <laughs> yo like they just let him <laughs> lay there i was like bro what is going on like just move it was eight dudes in the ring it was like jason jordan and jamie noble they just standing around him like no don't do it don't do it meanwhile they're not attempting to move seth rollins like, out bro. of the way at all it was so <laughs> obvious that they wanted him to dive on him but i mean you know it's Gotta wrestling, wrestling spend our disbelief when we watch it because a lot of it yeah. is dumb but you know it is what it is it is what it is so so i'm wondering are they writing Seth off TV, or is this just a way to give Bronson Reed a push? Because for the people that don't know, and I'm sure a lot of people probably don't know this, but the main event for Backlash, which was in – was it – what was Backlash? Was it France or New Zealand Ooh, or something? I don't I remember. It, maybe it was France. Let me double-check. Or maybe I'm thinking of Elimination Chamber. It was Elimination Chamber that I'm thinking of. That was in Rhea Ripley's hometown in Australia. The main event for Elimination Chamber was actually supposed to originally be Seth Rollins versus Bronson Reed. But what happened was Bronson Reed's wife was in the hospital with a child. She was going into labor. So they couldn't book Bronson Reed for that show. He had to stay in the States with his wife and see his kid be delivered. So it seems like they're running that back now and revisiting that. Thank God, because it sucked that Bronson Reed had to lose out on a match like that. But, you know. Yeah, I don't don't think he's getting now. Yeah, I don't think Seth is getting a... Right, uh, written off TV for sure. Um, you know, just another little side quest. They don't know all these little side stories, you know, to foreshadow the future. You know, some like The Wire, because The Wire <laughs> do that a lot. And you know, we're always in Baltimore. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Since we speaking on The Wire, bro. <laughs> no, speaking of foreshadowing in The Wire, bro. It took me years to realize that in season two, or was it season three? It was either season two or season three of The Wire. You can see my, what's, what's little man's name who, uh, who popped Omar? What's, what's oh. little man's name? Kid? Look, damn, damn, I don't know. 
No, not Michael, bro. Nah, it wasn't kid. Michael. Uh, the, the youngest kid. <sighs> The youngest yeah, the, kid. Yeah. He wasn't a part was of the main three. cast, but he was the one that, that ended up clipping Marlo, or not Marlo, clipping Omar in the end. But anyway, there's a scene in season three where... Kennard. Bump, Kennard, Kennard. Kennard, Kennard, Kennard. Our boy Kennard. So there's a scene in season three where Kennard is in the alley, right? And he's he's pretending to be Omar. He's like holding a toy gun, shooting at the other kids, and he's like doing things that Omar would do. And... uh. My boy Bunk is watching, and Bunk is like kind of disappointed in what's happening because he's like he sees the effect that Omar is having yep. on the community. And then fast forward, Kennard ends up being the one that takes Omar out. It's like a full circle moment that most people missed. I missed it until like earlier this year. Yeah, Crazy. Man. Crazy. Great storytelling. And so this is why we watch WWE because the storytelling, the foreshadowing is just it's it's beautiful. It's incredible. Wait, you know, we didn't it's even incredible. touch on Randy Orton. They 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 brought that back. Randy Orton's shoulder was up when he lost the King of the Ring match to Gunther, yeah. and that match turned into Gunther getting a title shot and winning the championship. Yeah, yeah. And now they're revisiting that. And now Orton is like, "Yo, my shoulder was never down. I want my shot at the championship." Mm. Look at Triple H, man. Chef's kissed the Triple H this week. I know we complain about Triple H a lot. He ain't pushing the brothers enough, but look, Triple H is doing his thing this week, man. He two for two. Two for two, two for man. two. I still can't believe the judgment day is over with, man. That was that was some good years, man. Two years. It was incredible. I know Edge is somewhere in his walking boot <laughs> in a dungeon, upset, like, dang, that's supposed to be me, man. But it's right. all good, man. He doing his thing at AEW, you know? Right. But, Shout out to Edge. Instant. Yeah, yeah man. man. So Judgment Day is not over, over. It's not but over, the, but like the, the OG. The judgment Day that we knew was over. Like, you know, no more Rhea Ripley, no more Damian Priest. But we still got the B team, you know? <laughs> I'm the I'm not B-team. mad at Finn Balor. It's definitely the, the Judgment Day B team. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's Finn Balor, Dominic Mysterio, JD McDonough, and Carlito. Like, no oh, powerhouses. <laughs> Their two no powerhouses are gone. You know, it, it, it was just time. It was just time, man. Like. I said it in our uh, last episode. Rhea Ripley and Damian Priest were just so over as baby faces that you couldn't really keep them in the Hill faction. It just didn't make sense. Yeah. So they had to break away. So maybe, maybe Judgment Day will get a new member eventually. I don't know, Braun Strowman or something. They need a powerhouse for sure because they do. You know, Carlito is. It. I know Carlito is Jack now. He on them all them steroids, but Carlito is not a powerhouse. We don't. I don't. I don't take Carlito serious in that way. So they don't need a powerhouse, bro. Allegedly, <laughs> by the way, allegedly, Carlito, don't come for me. I don't want you spitting apples <laughs> in my face or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I'm still. I'm still digging Judgment Day. This Finn Balor and Damian Priest feud is gonna be incredible, and I'm here for Bruh. it. I'm seated. <laughs> the face of Finn made <laughs> before he got out the ring when he was facing Damian <laughs> Priest, like he's hilarious, dog. I really love Finn, man. He came a long way, <laughs> right? Came and that was an way, incredible man. promo. That was the best promo of his career by far. Yeah, man. I'm not yeah, thinking of his stud line stuff though. The Sonya the Deville stud line? group, yeah, like oh. this group is. Ah. Get yeah, out of here. Get I, out I, of here. I don't Get know what's going here. on in that angle, but you know, Hunter loves his his factions and stuff. He so. loves his goddamn factions. <laughs> so we'll but, see, man. How did y'all feel at home about Monday Night Raw live from Baltimore? Did it live up to the hype? Was it the best episode of Raw since the Raw after Mania? I don't know. I think so. But you let us know how y'all felt. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe and tap that notification bell before I what? Before I what? Before I tap that ass, baby.